Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Time to talk vaccine stocks. And I'm a buyer of a, a couple of them, but a little concerned about the heat they're taking. And I think a lot of this has to do with uh, the monster J&J coming on the market with their new FDA approved vaccine. Uh, Merck is partnering with them to help manufacture. So, you know, this, this kind of behemoth coming into the market probably reduces sales expectations for what were basically four players, right? We had, here's Novavax down 20% since earnings. Um, we'll talk about them a little bit. Uh, Moderna, uh, Pfizer, BioNTech, and then AstraZeneca. Uh, now we have five major players in vaccines. Here's uh, Moderna getting hit. Uh, I did a thing on Monday uh, for our top stock picks and looking at Moderna, how long will the blockbuster stardom last? So uh, I had a, f a few bullet points, you know, looking at how they're ramping up production. They've got $18.4 billion in advance purchase agreements. Um the sales consensus for this year is 11 billion. The range next year gets really wide because the, the upside is so huge for Moderna with this uh, M messenger RNA vaccine. And, and yet some analysts are skeptical. You know, maybe we, we tamp down uh, COVID-19 sooner than expected and we don't need extra doses and there won't, there'll be less stockpiling by country. So those are the big issues there. What was, uh, as I was filming this on Monday, um, the stock was trading, you know, in the mid 140s. And I said, you know what? You got to buy at 130, 140, because after their vaccine day on April 14th, where they're going to have a, you know, a lot of updates, uh, how they're handling emerging variants, the next generation 1283 uh, cancer vaccines, that all, you know, their cash hoard. I said, I think this thing goes to new highs to 200. As I was doing this, uh, we just got a new SEC filing from the giant Bailey Gifford. And so what did Bailey Gifford do? They ramped their position by 20 million shares. They, were, they already had about 23 million shares and were like, um, you know, numbered, you know, basically tied with Vanguard and BlackRock for Q4. And uh, this is uh, the CEO, um, Stephen Bansell. Um, but this filing was on February 26th. They added 20 million shares. And now they are the top holder um, among everybody. So, so this is Moderna. Why is Bailey Gifford buying Moderna? Well, if you don't know who Bailey Gifford is, they're, uh, you know, $250 billion investment fund. Uh, in Edinburgh, founded in 1908, 44 private partners, and they are long-term investors. They just made a killing on Tesla because they were the largest holder of Tesla. Uh, they are the largest holder of a lot of things. Uh, they're probably number one and number, they're probably in the top three in Shopify and the Trade Desk. Um, and now they just made this big commitment to Moderna. So let's look at where they were buying, because if this was filed on February 26th, this is because they exceeded a 10% position. And um, so normally we're, you're used to the 13 Fs, which are what did a hedge fund or investment firm do in a quarter? And that's due 45 days after the quarter ends. So we got those updates and find, found out that uh, Bailey Gifford was buying more Moderna, got up to like 23 million shares. But they had to file a new update intra-quarter because their position moved above 10% of the stock. They own 11% of the company now. So if this was filed on Fe February 26th, you have 10 days to make this filing. This is called a, a 13G or D. Um, and it is a passive stake. So, um, you know, there it's, it, it's, it's, it's real, it's a 13 G essentially where a 13 D would be active. But anyway, so they had to file this within 10 days. So you figure they were, they were building this position, you know, anywhere in here from, you know, from 170 down to you know 140 before they had to file. So that's pretty interesting. That makes me a bigger buyer of Moderna. I like it closing this gap here. I would definitely be buying Moderna 
you know, inside 130, 135, and you're there right now. Uh, great time to add to Moderna. So let's look at uh, Novavax again. And Novavax, you know, I showed you 20% off the highs since earnings. Here's what I discussed with my people last night on the vaccine front, uh, where we were getting ready to buy maybe some more Moderna or Novavax. I mean, first of all, we had two great trades. Uh, recently, we rode Moderna from 110 to 180, Novavax from 120 to 200 in my healthcare innovators portfolio. So I'm a little skeptical about the J&J vaccine, just because, you know, I, I say, call me cynical, but first off, it's J&J, the Disney of blue chip big pharma. They have more lobbyists than all the defense contractors put together. Um, secondly, people are going crazy over, oh, this is only one dose and it only needs refrigeration. And uh, the data shows zero subsequent ho hospitalizations. But when I look at the data, I'm not convinced that there's anything special going on here. Um, so, you know, I think j and is getting a lot of attention. That's hitting the other vaccine stocks like it's going to go into their, um, you know, hit their earnings. Uh, so looked at an article last week. If you don't follow Stat, uh, Stat News, you, you got to follow them on Twitter and um, th they have a paywall, but all their COVID-19 articles have been free um, for the past year. They just and so you can you can get a look at this one. Uh, Fed science, FDA scientists endorsed j, j COVID vaccine and new data shed light on efficacy. Um, I took some highlights from there. You know, uh, and the two writers here are Matthew Herper and Helen Branswell, who between them probably have over 40 years of experience writing on epidemiology and vaccines. So you want to go there and check that out. Um, all right, we talked about Bailey Gifford. So who was, who's been buying Novavax? Well, um, that's where things get pretty exciting. Uh, let's go to Will Wisdom here. Uh, well, I showed you, I showed you Bailey Gifford buying Moderna. Um, uh, I wanted to show you uh, the buyer of Novavax, which would be Mr. R.A. Capital, Peter Kolchinsky. If you don't, this is another great resource, R.A. Capital. This guy is a virologist and a biotech investor. So, you know, you've got his training. He's a Ph.D., um, you know, in, uh, in vir viruses and knows the vaccines in and out. Um, he's got a great resource here on his website, RA Capital, where you can see all types of research. And he really crunches the data looking at the spread of the virus. Uh, he's got COVID-19 maps. He's got, he compares the vaccines to one another. Um, but he became the uh, second largest holder of Novavax in Q4. He added over 2 million shares. Um, so, you know, I want to follow him. You know, you talk about smart money in uh, in biotech. It's Peter Kolchinsky of RA Capital. So these are the things I'm looking at uh, as, as we watch the stocks get hit. I think there's opportunity here. Um, you know, I, I would want to be a buyer, you know, 190, 200 here in Novavax. Uh, I showed you my level in Moderna. I think that the pessimism is overdone for these leaders because of J&J &J and because of the idea that, oh, the pandemic's over. Everyone's getting vaccinated. We vaccinated, you know, 15 million people, supposedly doing 2 million a day. And by June, uh, the country will be vaccinated. But, uh, but the world won't be. So, you know, we still have, and we've got all the emerging variants, which Moderna is testing for. So we hope to to get a great update from them on uh, April 14th, vaccine day. Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to show you. Oh, I just did a report for, uh, for Zach's ultimate members called vaccine miracles. Uh, if you want to get a copy of that, if you don't have that, just email ultimate at Zach's and tell him cooker sent you. Um, and just take a look at the messenger RNA platform and why so many experts in science are excited about its ability to adapt and handle the emerging variants of COVID-19. All right, that's it for uh, this week. We'll talk to you soon.